Hello, hello, my name is Sofia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled Geolocation of Hidden Footage of a Russian Filtration Camp. One of my OSINT reports entitled Deported Civilians, How Civilians Are Illegally Deported to Russia was published at the Center for Information Resilience website amongst many other brilliant pieces of work from my colleagues. I spent weeks, months, it was months, <laughs> collecting and analyzing data in order to accurately portray the reality of the Ukrainian refugee population under Russian control, from the moment of their capture until they were taken to Russian soil, often against their will. Whilst gathering data for the investigation, I found hidden footage of the inside of a Russian filtration camp in Bezimen, Donetsk Oblast. The process of geolocating the videos was fairly simple, straightforward and took me less than five minutes, but it involved using a technique I have not yet covered on my blog, so I have chosen to write a tutorial on it. The footage. The first time I came across the hidden footage of a Russian filtration camp in Ukraine was on a Telegram channel. The Telegram message shared on May 5th, 2022 contained three different videos, all of the inside of an alleged filtration camp in Bezimen, Donetsk Oblast, and was followed by a text-only message with information about the life inside the facilities. I have the Telegram post here, so you can see there were three videos inside, there was a small description, and below there was a long description about what happened in the videos with some extra information. As I can't embed Telegram videos on my blog, boohoo, I have chosen to replace it with a YouTube alternative published on the same day containing the three original videos merged into one footage. The description of the video on YouTube also contained the information found on the additional Telegram text message. If you watch the footage below, you'll notice that it's mostly indoors, apart from a couple of instances in which the person filming approached the window. That scene lasting around 10 seconds between 2 minutes 32 mark and the 2 minutes and 42 mark gives me enough information to successfully geolocate the alleged Russian filtration camp. You can play the YouTube video, but I'll just play the Telegram channel because this is the only one that I was interested in. So the person just goes around, shakes some hands, goes up, and this is very long, so I'm just going to skip, skip, skip. So you see again, they're just showing the conditions they're living in, not great and then they approach some stairs and they start going up the stairs and in front of it there is a window and what happens they go to the window and for a few seconds they look out and when they look out i see a very clear picture of exactly what i'm looking for and that's it it stops that was enough off we go again geolocation the first step of any geolocation should be to get as much information about the potential location before starting. There's no point of opening Google Maps immediately if we have no idea what we're looking for. The Telegram text and the description of the YouTube video, which contain the exact same information, mention a few important things. As the text is in Ukrainian, I quickly copy paste it to Google Translate and get it translated to English. It says that the men were taken from Mariupol, so we know it's likely near that area. It names the village as nameless in English or this one in Ukrainian, the original language. Lastly, the text mentioned a school in the village. There's no name given to the school, but we can find that fairly quickly later on. First thing we need to do is locate this village on Google Maps. Interesting enough, if you try to put this one on Google Maps, you'll be directed to the wrong place. So I will show you what happens. Go Google Maps, we're facing Ukraine, paste it, and be like, oh, that one is like, yeah, sure. I guess you know Google and Google's like, here it is. This is what you're looking for. Google is wrong. This is not what we're looking for, but it, I guess it's close enough, so you got a bit confused. But that's fine. We can help Google, can't we? Unfortunately, there's a place in Donetsk Oblast that Google insists it's the correct location, as we've seen it. Google is sometimes unhelpful like that. Luckily for us, we already have enough information by now to figure out the correct village on our own. We know that it is a Russian filtration camp, therefore it will be in Russian-controlled territory. We know it's near Mariupol, and if you're like me and can spot a coastline at a glance, you would have noticed that in those 10 seconds by the window, you can see the sea in the distance. So I'm going to show you here again. Let's see if you can spot the sea. So the person goes to the window. That's the sea. There you go. That's not mountains. You can spot the sea 
from a glance that is seaside this is a coast we're looking for a coastal city so let's explore the map of ukraine between the city of mariupol towards the russian border focusing on coastal villages and seconds later you have your village as seen in the image below mariupol on the left highlighted in green rectangle Bezimen, which is spelled like this instead of like this, so there's a slight difference here at the end, you can see that, and that's why Google got slightly confused, but that is fine. I copied this from the text, so not my fault. Highlighted in red oval, and the Russian border, which starts at the blue arrow. And I can quickly show you what I did when I geolocated. So I started with Mariupol because I know they were caught in Mariupol. We know that this is the border and we know that this is Russian controlled territory or it was at the time of the geolocation. So I just went around, there you go, coastal cities, coastal cities and look at that. This is it. This is a very similar name to what we're looking for and very likely what we are looking for. Now we just need to find the local school. I always keep it simple and just search for Beziman School, which literally translates to Beziman School on Google Maps. So this Ukrainian. There's only one result in this small coastal village, so a great place to start. Thank you, Google, this time. Now that we have established a possible location of the footage, we need to verify it. If it is not correct, we'll need to retrace some steps and figure out what went wrong. If it is correct, we need to provide evidence of our findings. Verification. Looking again at the 10 seconds of the footage where the person filming approaches the window, you can see the frame below. This entire frame is enough to be able to geolocate the Russian filtration camp. We know we are at least on the second floor because we saw the person climbing up two flights of stairs. The building on the left is lower than where we are currently standing. The roof is flat, you can see it's flat roof, and there's something made of metal, I think. There's also some tall windows on the side of the building, there you go, and a row of trees across from it that, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to spot from a satellite image. Now that we have analyzed the image and know what we expect, let's jump into Google Earth Pro to verify that the school that Google Maps pointed to in Bezimen is the correct one. So let's get our Google Earth Pro. Let's go there, there, there. The school is this one. So this is a school that Google Maps is like, yep, this is the village school. Off we go again. At first glance and looking at the image below, it looks very promising. There's a flat roof, a row of trees next to it, and it's clearly facing the coastline. There you go, you have this one. And rotate, rotate, coastline, the sea. Off we go. There are a few other details that I would like to confirm before immediately verifying this geolocation. No detail is too much. I would like to view that small metal structure on top of the flat roof, the windows on the side and the height of the building to confirm that the section where the person was filming is actually higher than the rest. How can we do that with Google Earth Pro if this is a satellite image available? So how can you verify that there is a metal structure here, you can barely see anything. How do you verify that this section is taller than this section? And how do you verify that there were windows on this side? Because you cannot see any of these features, right? That's where the historical imagery option comes in handy. I use it very often when geolocating and it's extremely useful. At the top toolbar, you'll see an icon with a little clock and an arrow as highlighted below. So this is Google Earth Pro. When you click on it, a bar will show up with the available dates of the satellite images taken of the area. So let's check again. We have this one. This is our school and right at the top, let me just do that. Right at the top, you can see the little clock with arrow pointing back. So you click on it and suddenly you have this bar. It'll tell you this image, as we're seeing, was taken in June 2019. The interesting thing about satellite images is that depending on the slight tilt of the satellite at the time, the images change a tiny bit each time as they can be off nadir. This is great when attempting to figure out the height of buildings, for example, or analyze one of the sides. So if we play with the dates a bit, we can get enough evidence for all the details we were looking for, starting with the side windows. 
They're visible on June 2019 on the left and October 2015 on the right versions as seen below. Let me check it again. So zoom in a bit. Cannot really see any windows, right? So remember the dates I said here. So we had one June 19, so this is June 2019, but there are other versions of June 2019. So you go, you can see the windows on this one and the other version, which was October 2015. Let's just grab this go faster. October 2019. And there you go. It's a bit rubbish quality, but it is what it is, right? Next, we can verify the little metal structure at the corner of the flat roof. It's easily seen below, highlighted in light blue, one side, on the June 2019 left version, as well as the May 2018 right version. So again, let's jump back again. We're looking for the May 2018. So just play again, May 2018. Off we go, look at that, metal structure, easily seen. And we're looking for the June 2019, which is probably the other version. This one, look at that, much clearer. You can see clearly there is a metal structure here or some sort, I don't know if it's metal, it could be metal, who knows. Finally, let's confirm that the building where the person was filming was indeed at a higher level than the flat roofed building with the metal structure as seen above. The image from March 2016 on the left and the image from December 2015 on the right provide evidence for this claim. The section highlighted in purple below allows us to verify that there is indeed at least one extra row of windows above, likely indicating an extra floor. So let's check it in action again. We're looking for March 2016 and December 2015. So you can see, you cannot really see anything here. So let's just go back again. 16, so March, oh God. Okay, let's do December 2015, which is not uh, December, two Decembers. There you go. So you can see clearly there is a row of windows. So this section is higher than this section. And we can check as well the March, which is not this one, this one, two of March as well. So another section here, you can see this is higher than this one. Great exactly what we're looking for. And we're done. We checked enough details to establish beyond reasonable doubt that this is indeed the location where the hidden footage showing four civilian captives was filmed. Below is the image I use on the deported civilians, how civilians are illegally deported to Russia report to confirm my findings. I used the June 2019 satellite image from Google Earth Pro here on the left rotated the photo to face the same angle as the frame from the filtration cam video. So you have here the coordinates of the exact location where the person was at the time of the footage. If you're interested in reading that report and see the massive amount of evidence I collected to write it, it's on the Center for Information Resilience website on the reports. And here it is, my title, August 5th, 2022. So feel free to read it. It's very long, but it has a lot of very good evidence. Conclusion. When trying to verify locations, it's often useful to use the historical satellite imagery data on Google Earth Pro, as it usually provides several off-nadir images. These pictures, all put together, can paint a very realistic picture of buildings and structures that otherwise would be either too hard or impossible to verify. I hope this brief explanation of how to use this option was useful to anyone wanting to learn more about geolocation techniques. Thank you for listening. Sophia.